Welcome to a new video series on modeling with Onshape. Onshape is a 3D computer aided design tool, except it runs completely out of the browser. It's cloud based and requires no installation. That means that it runs on PC, Mac, Linux, it even has mobile phone and tablet versions, and you never need to install anything. To get started, we're going to go to create account. And you'll notice if you're a member of the public and you're not charging for anything, and that includes teachers and students, you can make a free account. You need to enter all of your details, including a correct email address. To get started, you will need to click on a link in the email that's sent to you to verify the account. And when it asks for a phone number, you can enter the phone number of your school. After you've signed in for the first time, you'll be taken to the document screen. This is like the desktop of a computer where it lists all of your documents. You can create labels, which are like folders to store things. You can save, you have a trash can, just like other programs you might have been used to. The first five things that show up are the inbuilt tutorials. Clicking on those will load the parts for those, but also a tutorial video, which you can watch to get some overview and basics of the software. Welcome to Onshape. We've created a few tutorials to help all of the parts, if you'd like to play with what you've seen in the video, are down the bottom here. We come up to the corner and click on On Shape to take ourselves back to our documents. Let's create a document ourselves for the first time. I'm going to call this one Test. You have to leave it on public unless you've got one of the paid subscriptions. Only then can you make something private. And we click Create Public Document to get started. In a few seconds, it will load the workspace and we can start our creation. First things to learn are the camera controls. If we hold down on the right clicker and drag the mouse, we can orbit the camera. If we click and hold the scroll wheel, we can pan the camera by moving the mouse and the scroll wheel or two fingers up and down on the trackpad will zoom in or out. We can also use the arrows here to rotate the camera, or we can click on a surface or on a corner, and the camera will spin to that point of view. We're going to start by creating a 2D shape and then extruding it to make it 3D. So we'll click on sketch. It's now asking us for a sketch plane. What it wants is a flat surface where we're going to draw. So I'm going to click on the top. And then I can either click on top over here to spin the camera or press the N key. And the camera will spin to look flat on to where we're drawing. While we're mid-sketch, we'll have this box here. And when we're finished sketching, we hit the tick. Or if we want to cancel what we've done, we hit the cross. We're going to start by making a very simple shape. And that's a rectangle with a circle inside. You'll notice as you're drawing, it's giving you the measurement, but it's to multiple decimal places and it's impossible to get it to exactly what you want. That's fine. The way this program works is that we draw what we want roughly, and then we come up and add dimensions and constraints to get the geometry exactly how it needs to be. We're going to start by dimensioning this shape here. We click on a line, we type in a measurement, hit enter, and it will now switch to that exact size. You can do the same for the circle by entering the diameter. Press escape to exit the dimensioning tool. Now we'll notice everything we've drawn is blue, which means it's unconstrained. If we click and drag on it, it will move around. If I didn't have one of these dimensions, I could also click and change the size. So the more dimensions and constraints we add, the less freedom it has, and the closer to what we're aiming for we get. So I'll put this one back to 60. First constraint we're going to do is a coincident constraint, which means two things touch each other. If I click on the corner here and hold shift and click on the origin, and then come up and click coincident, it's going to move everything to make them touch. You'll notice now that the rectangle has turned black and I can no longer click and drag it because it's completely locked in place. The circle, however, does not have a home and it will move wherever I drag it. So we're going to fix that by sketching a line and the line is going to go from corner to corner. We get the nice graphics to tell us that we're snapping. 
This corner is just a construction line, so we'll tell it that. We'll click on it, and then up the top here we have construction, or we can press the Q key on the keyboard, and it will toggle it to construction. It becomes a dotted line, and now we know it's just for guidelines. To get our circle in the middle of this, we'll click on the circle and the line, and then midpoint, and it will move it and lock it into place. If I try and click and drag anything, nothing will move. It's completely locked in place. It means everything is fully constrained. Our sketch is finished, and we can hit the tick. I'm going to spin the camera around to 3D. These planes might be a little bit annoying for you if you want to hide them. Anything over on the side here has an eyeball, which you can click to toggle its visibility. We're now going to go to Extrude. I'm going to click on our shape and we instantly get a 3D preview where we can click and drag an arrow. But we're going to be more precise than that, so I'm going to type in an exact measurement. The preview will update. If I'm happy, I click the tick. One of the excellent things about Onshape and other such software is they're parametric. That means everything you do is stored and you can go back and edit something to update it. We'll notice our sketch is hidden, but we can still double click on it and now we're back inside it and I might decide I actually want this to be really long. I'm going to double it to 200 and our circle kept in the middle because of those constraints which is really nice and I might narrow this as well just to make this obvious and I've got my new geometry. The second that I hit this tick it will recalculate the extrude because the extrude as we can see is based on sketch one and update it to match. We can double click on extrude as well so I now want this to be 20 thick, hit the tick, everything updates. It's really nice. The last thing we're going to do is to do some fillets. So we're going to click on the lines that we want to add the fillet to. Once again, we get the arrow, so we can get a rough idea. But I'm going to do it precisely. I might decide that I don't want all of these to be done, so if I hover above here. I can click the X to remove them. I might just do the opposing corners, so I'll get rid of these two. When I'm done, hit the tick. But before that, I'll just point out that you have a before and after slider to see the effect of what you're about to do. And my geometry is updated. The fillet, like everything else, can double click, go back in. I might decide I do want to add those edges again. And I, in fact, want them to be 25 millimeters. I can update that, and everything is great. Onshape will save you everything you do automatically. You never have to worry about a save button. If you want to have different versions, you can come up and click this button here. Very handy feature. We have our part listed down here. We can show and hide it. If we right-click on it, we have options for exporting for 3D printing. We have things like assigning a material. It won't change the appearance, but it can be used for simulations later on. And we also have things like editing the appearance, which will let us change the color and the opacity, how see-through it is. Anytime we want to get back to work on another document, we can click on On Shape. We know that everything is saved. And my documents, all of the things we've been working on, uh, listed here.